What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, so your sixth guy is who? Number six for your 2020 rookie wide receivers. Who is Ray GQ? Who's right there? Uh, it's Mims Inns, Higgin Mims, <laughs> Mims Higgins. It's Denzel Mims right now, but once we stop the show, it's probably T Higgins, and then when I wake up tomorrow, it's probably Denzel Mims. But right now, at right. this moment, well, again, Denzel why Mims rankings are are so tough and it's so subjective. Because it's like, I could be feeling one way one day and the next another. So I, I feel you on that. I got Mims there now, though. Mims is my sixth, sixth ranked wide receiver in the class today. I like so the, Mims. The question is, is after the combine, people immediately shot Mims up ahead of a bunch of dudes. And now it seems like, you know, maybe you dropped him back a little or you're not, he's not quite up there with you. Is there any thoughts on that? or? Uh, I think pre-combine he was eight for me. So then he really didn't move up that far, right? He moved up three spots. And it's, it's, I wouldn't just say it's because of the combine, because one of the guys that I had higher, you know, Henry Ruggs, he fell a little bit for me after the combine, which I know that seems like ass backwards. But um, Mims, was, Mims was always in my top 10. And being down here in the state of Texas, I've seen a lot of Baylor games. I've been to quite a few Baylor games. So I've heard about Denzel Mims, got to see him, whether I wanted to or not. Uh, but I think he is a very good talent. He's a talented wide receiver and I always point to that sec second year, right? Sophomore year production. He had over a thousand yards as a sophomore, which is huge for me, right? Big time. Even though he fell off a little bit as a junior, then he came back to dominate as a senior. So uh, I think he just has – he's a solid, Some of that junior year could have receiver. been a, an injury. He had a broken hand, I, I think, for a decent amount of that, that hand, campaign. And that Baylor team was horrible. It was awful, um, yeah. Yes, it was bad. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to – let's – I don't want to make excuses for him, right? Yeah, but he right. did have a down junior year. But he came back and he showed that same dominance that he did as a, as a sophomore. Only thing is he's kind of an older prospect, which I am kind of an ageist in Dynasty – even though at the wide receiver position, I don't feel like it matters as much as running backs, mm -hmm. uh, but he is a little bit older, but he's, he went to the combine and just blew it up. And then even before that, right, he went to the senior bowl and right. by all accounts, he was the best wide receiver out there, which is another, he just yeah. checked every freaking box after that. I think that's the biggest thing with him right now is that he's checking. He really is checking all them boxes. Yep. Yep. So what, what I, I look at him as like, he's, he might be the best cheater in the class. Like he uses his hands and cheats at the top of that route better than all the dudes that I've watched. I think he's like that kid that's like spends more time trying to figure out how to cheat. And if he just spent that much time studying, he would have passed, but he's just like so good at cheating. No, nah, but I think that's a huge, like, I think being good at cheating is a huge part of being good at playing receiver, especially if you're a bigger, more physical player like he is. Not to say that obviously he blew the combine up. So there's some good physical uh, athleticism there, but. Well, well you, I say, how, how do you cheating, feel about that? Cheating, I think that's a good thing. Like, I didn't mean, right? Yeah, no, me too. Sound like a bad thing. What's your thoughts I'm, on that? I mean, especially very, coming from the DB perspective. I'm right. very proud of you. I'm very proud of you because that is an astute observation that many people have not talked about. But I believe if you check out the, it's either the UTSA game or the Texas game, I think it's the first or second play of the game. His hand fighting at the top of his routes, I, I pointed that out. It's just impeccable how he's so able good. to just get that subtle push off yeah. to create that little bit of separation, and the best receivers in the NFL do it. The Andre you have Hopkins to. does it all the time. I mean, you have to. But you got to do it in a way to get away with it, right? You right. can't. You got to be good at cheating, right? Yes. It's it's yes. not it's not getting caught with extending those arms. It's it's keeping him inside the frame right there and getting away with it. And it's they it's, called it. The they called it T-Rex. They called it T-Rex. When we were in college, they would teach the wide receivers. They said, act like your arms are like T-Rex arms. And everything that you do, do it in tight. Don't extend. Just right. keep it tight and then do it. As, as a DB, though, you're trying to get your hands on him and you're trying to battle him throughout that whole route. And so he's got to be able to 
wax, wax you off, get on top of you. Like I was watching a Brett Coleman video. He said he, he treats route running like a box, like a moving boxing match. And it's, he's just so physical. He's pro he's got to be the, the most physical wide receiver in this class to me. Do you agree with that? He's pretty physical, man, especially within his routes. He's very, right. he's very good. He's, you know, I, I haven't really thought about it like that. After the catch. Yeah, yeah, not, not after, after, the, after catch, the catch. But going up to make the catch. Like, he, he's, I've never seen so many defense pass interferences that went for catches. Like, this dude is just, he won't be out bullied. Like, he's just going up point. and making ridiculous yeah. catches. He definitely plays a good brand of bully ball at the top of his routes. Uh, that, and that's part yep. of what I like, Mims. And then, like you said, he checked all those boxes. He has some athleticism. I would thought I would see a little, once those combine numbers came in, I thought, with those numbers, you thought you would see like a little bit more separation um, across the board and in his routes, especially playing in the Big 12. But it didn't seem like it was always there. And I, it surprised me a little bit that the numbers were that great at the combine. Not to take anything away from him. He's, he's fantastic. Surprised me too. Surprised yeah. me too. I didn't see, I didn't see 438 on tape. You know what right. I mean? I didn't see 438. I, yeah. The build up I, I didn't speed see looks that. good. Yeah. Yeah. He's a former track star. So them boys know how to run a 40 yard dash, you know, like that's the ticket. That's the, that's why I say to me, the 40 is one of the most, it's probably the most overrated fucking thing in football. Like for certain, like I get it, right. You want to see if a player's got that long speed and able to, to, but there's nothing like having heat on your behind chasing you, right? Game speed versus time speed is completely different to right. me, in in my opinion, right? Well, and I mean the analytical people will battle you to death on that. That that makes no sense. But I mean, I don't. I feel like that just comes from. And I'm not going to say that you know you have to have played to to know anything. But I mean, so let me let me let me let me ask you this: all th everybody on this pod, everybody on this show. You can go in your street right now and run full speed, right? And you'll have your 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 time. Put a pit bull behind you. I bet you run just a tad bit faster if that damn dog was chasing you and you had to get right. to the crib. Yeah. yeah. Or you I've, might I've fuck up and stumble, you know? There you go. I, I've told these dudes all the time that, like, when, when we're explaining that kind of stuff is like, man, like, when you put me on a field and I go run by myself, it's whatever. But if I have to chase somebody down, I could usually catch somebody back in the day. Like, I'm just, but like, if we ran at two separate times, that dude's probably going to smoke me. But like, right. for whatever reason, I could usually catch somebody. So yep. it's just, it's different. So. So Ray, I know you got I know you got Mims at six, and and you teeter in between five and six. But what are some of the things that are keeping him out of of climbing up into that top five or being like towards the top of that five? I mean, if you have him there, I wouldn't I wouldn't argue. It's yeah. just a little bit of personal preference, right? It's just a little bit of once you. I'll just say this: all six of these guys, outside of maybe number one. You could switch them, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't bat an eye. Like if you yeah. could take my number two and put them at six, you could take my five, put them at three. It's all razor ass thin for that's, me. That's um, that's kind of why I went. We had initially had five. I kind of went to six because that's kind of how I feel. Like I feel like yeah. I'm all. Right, I'm, I agree with you. I think you could take the top guy and kind of split them off a little bit, but it's not as big as I think some people make it out to be. And I think, uh, but these rest of these guys, I'm not mad at you. However, you want to chop them up. So with yep. that being said. Um, I, I currently have Mims at number six as well. I know Jay Wayne has him a little higher. Um, yeah, but, I think I got to slide him in at three right now, but I mean, that could change. But I just, just the, the exquisite ball skills and the physicality and getting off the line of scrimmage, like he's, he, he reminds me a bit of DK beating press coverage. Um, well, he's an explosive physical vertical threat that just can't be out bullied he blocks and so I think there's a lot of potential but like you said man I, I can't argue with you however you want to chop these guys up I think that just speaks to the the overall strength of this class and how all these boys know how to use their head and shoulders to, to make fakes and they they stick hard you know play hard stick hard and the only time you love them well I'll, you know you know the rest but like these boys all know how to I think the thing that separates some of them though is that physicality so that's kind of what's giving me the edge with Mims right now but um I mean I, like I said great class I'm ready is to you, is your six on this list is your six on this list out of these yeah so who would you who, who are you switching Mims with uh 
Well, I think I got to, like you said, if you, if I want to put your number two at the number six, that's what I would, that's what I'm at right now. Okay. But I, I, honestly, okay. we'll get to your number two in a little bit. I don't know what to do with that guy. We'll, we'll, I'll give it away. Is Rager. I, I'm confused. I don't know if, how to. If anybody fucks with him, they know, they know your love affair for, for <laughs> right. Rager. Right. So. I don't know. I don't know what to make of it, man. I get, ex- we'll get, we'll, we'll get the Rager in a little bit. I'll leave it there. All right. All right, so let's move to number five. I'm with you at six uh, with Mims. Jay Wayne has Mims at three. 